let's say that you have nothing. You have to start from scratch. No capital, no network. But you have all the insights, all the knowledge that you have currently. And you have to start from scratch. What will you do? Which industry will you pick? How will you do it differently? And why? Break this down for us. Uh, do I have the skills? You have all the skills, all the knowledge, all the intelligence. But you have to start from scratch. No network, no capital. Let's say I'm 25 year old. Uh, th that has all the skills and the knowledge and the intelligence, but does not have anything else. No capital, no network, nothing. The first thing to do is to know yourself. The journey always begins with self-knowledge. So know yourself means, do I know my strengths? Hmm. Do I know my weaknesses? Uh, do I know how I learn? So do I, can I find that zone, which I call as a, as a sweet spot, which is pleasure, meaning, and strength. What is that area where I can have fun? Mm -hmm. See, anything I do for a long period of time, I need to have fun. So if I'm working 70 hours a week in the office, it better be fun because you can't really extend yourself and, uh, and sacrifice your life for anything. It has to be fun. So you have to find the intersection between fun, meaning, and strength. Fun is, is, is very easy to understand. Right? You, do you feel like coming to work mm -hmm. every day? That's fun. Meaning is something where you can see the larger purpose of what we're trying to accomplish. You're going somewhere, you have a certain um, understanding that, look, it's not just for me, it's it's serving a larger purpose. It's much bigger than me, than its meaning, right? And then area of strength is where you feel like I'm losing track of time. When I'm doing this, time just flows, right? I, I'm in the state of flow. It, when you find an area of your strength, you start to experience a zone of flow. So when it is fun, it's meaningful and it's an area of strength. That's the place where great careers are made, great businesses are built. So the first thing is when you introspect, when you understand who you are, then you try to find that place where you might find that zone of flow where you can really make the biggest contribution in the world. It, I think it's all it's not just about making money, right? Of course, we all want to make money and financial security is one of the things that we all aspire to and, and so on. But if you study Maslowian hierarchy. Hmm. Abraham Maslow built that hierarchy of human needs. You start with Rodi basic Kapna needs. Makan. Yes, Rodi Kapna Makan and all of that. And then you have love and belonging needs. Then you have self-esteem needs and then you have self-actualization needs. Eventually, we want to go down that path. So assume that your security needs will get taken care of if you focus on eventually getting to self-actualization. And I'm assuming that all of us have the benefit of good education and you know skills etc that we have acquired so go and first explore what who are you hmm. and where can you do your best work and once you have figured that out then go after everything else that's number one number two is you have to have a network of friends or a, a few people that you can not every skill in the world is something that you can acquire yourself because you have a certain areas of interest etc hmm. but to build anything, to build a business, you will need people with complementary skills. I would say at least pick one co-founder. If you're starting an entrepreneurial venture, find a co-founder who complements you. If you are the CTO type, get a CEO type. If you are the CEO type, get the CTO type. Broadly, these are the two types of people that would exist. CEO type is one who can sell, who can evangelize, who can maybe build, build teams and can lead and CTO is someone who can crack a product, can crack a very big idea, can, can go deep into execution and so on. And broadly, these are the two types that you can find. If you are one of the two types, find the other type. Two, two people teams tend to build great ideas. So, so once you figure out who that co-founder is mm -hmm. and then you can brainstorm with her or him what what is that zone of pleasure, meaning and strength for both of you and then you can start to build the core of an idea Nowadays, it's really diff not that difficult to build something, uh, build a proof of concept. Mm -hmm. So I think then build that and then then the rest follows. You know, go raise a little bit of capital and then build on the idea. Of find Solve one deep problem. I would mm -hmm. say, again, you can start with multiple things and answers would have been different depending on when you started it. When mm -hmm. Fractal started, when I started, answers were different. Now, if you were to start, the answer would be to find a very, very clear problem, a user, a pain point that you can solve. Right? Mm -hmm. Something in the world is not exactly how it should be. You, you should feel like, this makes no sense. Why is this world mm -hmm. not working this way? 
then you found the root of a problem or a root of a solution, right? Find that user, solve that problem for her or him, and then really go after that in a in a in a way that is remarkable, right? And that's the crux or the or the kernel of an idea that you have to build on. Do not worry so much about whether it is how big it is and hmm. the idea, etc. It will become big because the idea will expand, the market will expand, things will change. So the idea will also evolve. But find that one problem deeply and solve for it. And then if you can make that a model by which you can get paid for it, even better. Right? Think of who's going to... The person whose pay problem you're solving may not be the one who's paying for it. Right? So f- figure that out as, as to how the economics of that will work out. Who's going to pay for it and why does it make sense? And what economic problem you're solving, therefore, which are the entities that will pay you for it? Right? Once you have solved that problem, I think the rest will follow investors will follow and so on and over time i think if you have to build a network so if you said you start with no network one of the most important determinants of success is what kind of a friends what kind of friends network do you have and how helpful are they when you need them but it doesn't start by them helping you it starts by you helping them so over time build those sets of relationships where you are helpful when you have time Try to use your skills, your time, your resources to be helpful to people around you. Because that law of karma will play and when you need them, they will come and help you as well. So do not focus on when that will happen. Do not do quid pro quo. Go ahead and be helpful to other people. And over time, build that set of networks and set of people and relationships that will come in very handy. Typically, that happens in your undergrad you can build a bunch of the best relationship you can build are when you are very young and you are impressionable, but so are your peers. And so build these this amazing set of friends in your undergrad time. Then when you go to grad school, for example, if you're going to MBA or something like that, again, very, very important that you build a solid network of friendships where you are catching up, you are helpful, not just envy and you know, you know, measuring who's got more salary, etc., but you're actually genuinely there in their lives to celebrate their weddings and other important events in their lives, being helpful when they're looking for jobs, etc. And eventually, when you do that over a sustained period of time, let's say 5, 10, 15 years, you'll see that you'll have a really set of amazing friends hmm. who are always there to help you. And this is not just about your classmates, right? It's It, it could be your neighbors, it could be your, your neighborhood club, or it could be you know other friends that you've acquired over the over time. It could be friends of friends. Uh, that some of the weaker relationships that you have, friends of friends, they can be very helpful in when you're looking for a job or looking for help or looking for a client as a business. So build that network. And the key thing to that is you need to spend time and you need to be helpful without really anticipating something in return.